Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back and thanks for checking out our first electric scooter review. Get ready to soar as we dive into a detailed look at the Varla Eagle One. This machine is packed with power, range, and features that'll literally make your face hurt from excitement. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, let's start things off with the power of the Eagle One. This electric vehicle is equipped with dual 1000 watt LGS DDM motors that peak at 1600 watts each, combining for a total power output of 3200 watts under max acceleration. Power is regulated via dual 25 amp speed controllers. The Eagle One cranks out 36 newton meters of torque and is capable of climbing hills as steep as 30 degrees. It's an absolute powerhouse, allowing you to keep up with or in some cases outpace most urban and suburban traffic. You won't have to worry about getting up to speed quickly either because this scooter accelerates like a banshee and can reach its top speed of 40 miles per hour in no time. It doesn't seem right to cover the power and speed of the Eagle One without taking it on a speed run to see if we can hit or exceed the claimed 40 mile per hour top speed. I actually came out here earlier and I hit 42 miles per hour as you can see here but my 360 camera was set to time lapse, so I'm back out here now to get the, all of the shots that I need. No more traffic. Let's hit 40, y'all. Let's hit that 40 again. So if you want to hit the top speed on your Eagle, oh look, 41. So yeah, we hit uh, 41 without full battery, which is a good thing. So definitely capable of the claim top speed, even without a full battery. What I was going to say before I cut myself off, if uh, you want to try to hit the top speed of your Eagle One, make sure your tires are inflated to 45 PSI and you've got a full charge. Next, let's talk about the battery of the Eagle One. It's packed with an impressive 52 volt, 18.2 amp hour battery, which uses high quality LG cells to keep you rolling. With this 946 watt hour pack, you can expect a range of up to 40 miles on a single charge. That's enough to keep you cruising around the city or exploring the countryside without any worries. It does ship with only a single 1.7 amp charger, so be prepared to spend eight to nine hours to fully charge the Eagle One. You can also purchase an additional charger from Varla as this scooter has two charging ports, which can be used simultaneously. Suspension is a crucial aspect of any rideable and Varla is well aware as the Eagle One features a robust dual suspension system with a front and rear independent spring setup that feels like riding on a cloud. The closest I've felt to this suspension is a Suron, if that puts things into perspective. This setup absorbs bumps and shocks like they're not even there, ensuring a smooth and comfortable experience, even on rough terrain. So say goodbye to those teeth rattling potholes and enjoy a silky smooth ride. Oh, great. Nice. So in the process of uh, having some fun, going over some bumps, the mount that was holding my action too, 
didn't hold so hopefully I'll see it on the way back and uh, if you guys see it and I don't drop a comment and maybe uh, <laughs> maybe somebody else will get it and they can make some videos because I don't think I'm getting that thing back oh, look there it is it's broken <laughs> I just realized I saw it and it's broken rip action too oh we didn't know maybe it's not broken I thought I saw a broken camera, but... Hey, I don't even think the lens is scratched. Whew, crazy. Ooh, the top is really scratched up. Oh well. It's an action camera. Safety is always the top priority, and Varla has got you covered in that department as well. The Eagle One comes equipped with hydraulic EABS brakes, a regen braking system that helps you stop quickly and confidently. These brakes are manufactured by Zoom and provide excellent stopping power, giving you complete control over your ride. An added bonus is, by using the regen, your brake pads will last much longer than normal since the motors are used to slow you down instead of the hydraulic brakes. I'm not brave enough to test if the EABS system will prevent the front brake from locking up in the event that one inadvertently squeezes the throttle, which looks and feels just like a brake lever. Please comment down below if you know the answer to that or had the balls to uh, test this yourself. Another nice added touch is that the brake light actually flashes when the brakes are applied, which definitely makes you more visible in all conditions, but especially at night when it's most important. All right, next I want to talk about the things that I love about the Eagle One. And honestly, I could go on and on here. But to summarize, everything that I've covered in this review up to this point is why I love the Eagle One. The overall experience you get for what you pay is just second to none. From what I've experienced, the super wide floorboard, as you can see here, and the uh, rear footrest is super, super helpful for leaning all your weight forward when you have it in dual turbo because you really need to do that otherwise this thing could throw you backwards and also an honorable mention to the uh, board lights uh, really nice touch especially at night you're super visible so it's pretty cool that Varla integrated that into the board and uh, yeah it's really handy the flashing brake light when you press the brake lever is a really really nice touch as well all right so before I go into some of the things I don't like about the Eagle One something that may address everything I'm getting ready to mention and that is the Eagle One V2. Yep, you heard me correctly. Varla recently announced the Eagle One V2, which is officially going for sale July 10th. So that's not too far away. So if you're watching this video, it may be worth waiting for that one because I'm pretty sure the price on this one's gonna go down when that one releases. And the price for that one's gonna be $17.99. So a little more expensive than this one here at full retail. So hopefully we'll see a nice price drop with this one if Varla keeps it around for the time being. Some of the things that are being addressed in the V2, they're adding tubeless tires, which is a really nice touch. Uh, a lot of people are asking for that. They've improved the fenders because those do tend to slap on the tires when you're uh, going off of jumps and things like that. They've added some uh, better accent lighting, as you can see here. I don't know if the uh, directional arrows on that light mean that maybe there's like an integrated turn signal or something like that which would be really cool other improvements they've upped the battery capacity to over 20 amp hours so you'll expect a little more range although the top speed will remain the same so again if the price drop on the v1 is significant and your main concern is top speed then this may be uh the best option as far as varda's go even after the v2 releases keep an eye out for our comparison because we will be getting the v2 soon and we'll make sure we share all of the differences and similarities in depth for you guys once we get that. Uh, hopefully also with the V2, they add a headlight. I can't tell from the silhouette on their site right now if it has a headlight or not, but that would be a nice touch as well. And the last thing they've added, which is really, really huge for me, is they've gone from the key ignition to uh, NFC wireless ignition. And they've also implemented some sort of uh, security feature with that system. So I'm curious to see uh, how that works. But yeah, the Eagle One V2, dropping soon check out varla's site and you can use our code rusty rose to save 60 bucks 
off of any of our scooter and you could even stack our code on top of any current promotions and save even more so yeah check out the site and uh, pick a scooter let me know what you got in the comments and how much you love it and if you want us to review anything else all right so going on to the things that we don't like and again we hope the v2 addresses a lot of these number one the front brake line where it comes out of the stem tends to rub on the front swing arm and i know it's just a matter of cable management and it's not a defect it's more of a personal gripe but that is something that could lead to an issue down the line if somebody doesn't realize it also the uh the stem it can get wobbly uh not saying it's dangerous but it's something you want to keep an eye on especially if you're somebody that doesn't fold your scooter often because they don't have to your clamp could go neglected so it's a good idea to check the clamp before every ride to make sure your stem is nice and tight there is an aftermarket rugged clamp that's available for this scooter but again with the v2 i'm hoping that they address this issue and lack of the headlight is another thing that i'm just not a fan of the board lights are great but they're just not enough for when you're riding at night you can't really see in front of you and down the road very much so hopefully a uh, headlight is added to the v2 Another thing I'm not a fan of is this selector switch. I just don't get the layout. Uh, it works fine. Again, no defect. It works just fine as intended. I just don't get how Eco is down on the left one, but Dual is down on the right one. And that's just not how they're labeled. And it's just, it's weird. But yeah, just a personal gripe, nothing uh, defective. Just something that I'm not a fan of. Most of the stuff is pretty minor. Uh, other things are the super slow charger. 1.7 amps is just not cutting it. Making you charge your scooter for nine hours is gonna to lead to a lot of people charging it overnight, probably unsupervised, which is not the best idea. So uh, I think a faster charger would be nice or include a second one for free. Currently with the promotion they have going on, they are giving you the option for a second charger, which is cool. Another thing is the, the layout of the handlebars, uh, specifically the selector and the ignition. They seem like they should be switched and they would work better switched. So I'm probably gonna do that. So just a tip for you guys, if you're getting one of these, and you may like it more that way. The fender slap is another thing. I know it's minor, but if they break off after a while because you're having fun and going off of little jumps, then that's not a good look. And again, that's something that it looks like they've addressed with the V2 because it looks like it has much sturdier fenders. The last thing I don't like, I'm gonna pull over here for this. It's actually not a huge issue for a lot of people, but for me, this trigger throttle is just not doing it. I'm just not a fan of my throttle feeling like a brake lever as you can see i mean it feels exactly the same and i have whiskey throttle this thing a couple of times otherwise it's very nice this qs s4 display is super smooth the throttle is very linear it's easy to control your speed not super bright in daylight but you can turn that up in the settings and on that note i want to run through the uh, settings for everybody really quick just so you can see what can be changed as well as how to change it and also there's a feature in here that should address the whiskey throttle issue because uh, i don't want to do that anymore as you can see if I was just standing here and I think I'm hitting the brake lever, it can just take off on me. So let's go through the settings and I'll show you everything you can change and adjust on the Eagle One. We're going to go through this quickly because uh, I feel it's important and I haven't seen this covered in other videos. So in order to access the settings, you want to press and hold both buttons at the same time. And then you can see now we're on P1. I've got the PDF here and we'll just start going through this. So P1 is the LCD brightness. Uh, we're going to turn that up. So we're now in P2. So let's go all the way back to P1. It's got a lot of settings. I think 17, 19, 20. All right, we're back at one. Uh, let's see, let's turn the brightness up to three. Hopefully that helps with this video. All right, P2 is speedometer units. So this comes shipped with the speed in kilometers. If you wanna change it to miles per hour, P2 is where you do that. P3 is the battery voltage. Leave that on 52 volts. P4 is the auto time off. So if you wanna change the auto time off here, you can do that. P5 is unused, don't change anything there. P6 is the wheel diameter, don't adjust that. P7 is the motor magnets, do not adjust that either. P8 is your power level, 100 is the max, so just leave it there because we all want the max, right? P9 is start mode. So this is the feature that I wanna change because this allows you to change it from throttle start to kickstart. So this should eliminate the whiskey throttling. One is to kickstart, I've got it on one. So I'm glad that we've addressed that and we made the screen brighter, let's move on. P10 is unused. P11 is the regen braking strength. One is the weakest, five is the max. Three should be the default, but I just saw mine is on one. That's very interesting. So let's put that up to three so we can actually feel what the regen is supposed to feel like. Sorry if I would keep moving the camera around and making it hard to see the display. Okay, P12 is acceleration. 
crazy that it's only set to three and five is the max. I think I'm just gonna leave it on three because it's plenty fast as it is and uh, I don't wanna affect my range. All right, 13 and 14 are unused. 15 is the automatic scooter voltage shut down. Do not adjust that. So let's leave 15 there. P16, you can reset the lifetime odometer. I don't see why that's an option, especially if you're selling it. That's kind of uh, misleading, but it's an option. Let's see, P17 is your cruise control. I'm not gonna mess with that, but that is kind of cool that that's an option. P18 unused, P19 unused. P20 is communication protocol. That can't be adjusted. So thankfully uh, it can't be adjusted because it sounds like something that could really mess up your scooter. And that's it for all the modes. All right, so let's jump back on it. Now that we've got the kickstart feature enabled, let's see if that's working. And then I'm curious to see how the brakes feel now that we actually have the regen on. All right, so I'm not moving, hitting the throttle and it's not taking off on me. So whiskey throttle issue solved. Now let's see how much I need to kickstart it to get it moving. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, definitely guys, if uh, you get any scooter, I strongly suggest put it to kickstart if it's an option because this automatically feels so much safer. Considering everything the scooter has to offer, the Varla Eagle One delivers an insane value for only $16.99 before discounts. Occasionally, it's up to 300 bucks off. If you use our code RUSTYROADS, you'll always get the max discount or a nice 60 bucks off if there aren't any current promotions going on. With its powerful motors, long range battery, top notch suspension, and high quality braking system, it's clear that Varla has prioritized performance and durability here. When compared to other scooters in its class, the Eagle One truly stands out as a worthy investment and it may be the least expensive quality PEV that can get you into the 40 mile per hour club. So if you're in the market for an electric scooter that's fast, powerful, and offers excellent value, the Varla Eagle One is definitely worth considering. We hope you enjoyed the review. Please click the little bell on your screen that will notify you of our next video. And if you subscribe, that is greatly appreciated as well. As always, and until next time, hang loose, ride safe, and be nice to each other. Peace.